Hello and welcome back to the channel. As you can see from the title of the video, today we're going to be taking a look at some lock picking. Now you might think that that's a bit of an odd thing for a tech channel to do, so let me explain. The eagle eye among you might realise that this isn't my uh, normal table that I'm sitting at, and that's because at the moment I'm actually in a hotel room, and will be for almost the next week uh, while I'm away with work. Um, I'm travelling more and more with work at the moment, so I'm trying to find things that I can make videos about when I have some downtime in my hotel rooms. Obviously home automation videos are quite difficult to make when you're not at home. Um, so, lock picking is something that I've wanted to have a go at for a while. Um, and I, I think I'll argue that it is techy. Um, you can just look at this, uh, this acrylic lock that's, uh, part of the training kit you get, or the training kit that I've got, and to me, that looks very techy, very geeky, um, and something that I think will fit in quite well on a technology channel like this one. So, we're going to dive in and have a look at some lock picking. Okay, to get started in the world of uh, lock picking, uh, you go you are going to need um, some things that you probably don't already own, and one of those is a lock picking set like this one. I got this off Amazon. Uh, it cost me. I think about £13, and I'll leave an affiliate link down in the description. Uh, if you buy this kit, or indeed anything off Amazon within 24 hours of clicking one of my links in the description, I get a small kickback from that. However, the, the, the product doesn't cost you any more. Um, so this uh, product, you know, is quite cheap, um, and you can definitely get better lock picking tools than this. But for your first dabble into lock picking, um, you probably don't need much more than this. Yes, you could buy uh, one or two picks um, of higher quality for about the same price. Um, but this is just kind of a convenient package for someone who's uh, starting out. So in this kit, you get the picks that you can see here, as well as these tension bars and this black um, wallet that holds the tension bars and the picks and you also get two practice locks now if you've watched any lock picking videos on YouTube before you will have seen this one this is a padlock um, and you get the keys with it as well and the great thing about this is you can see the what's going on inside and see what's happening when you're picking the lock which the, you can then translate um, when you're dealing with locks that you can't see through. The other thing you get in this kit is another see-through lock and this time this is the type of lock that you'd see in your front door at home um, and this is different on both sides these are actually two separate locks in one um, so how you pick these and the order that you pick the pins in is slightly different and you get the keys as well, there's two keys and there's obviously one for each side and they are different. Now, these locks here are very easy to pick and they're very easy to pick because you can see exactly what's going on inside the lock. So what I'd also recommend that you pick up uh, while you're learning how to uh, lock pick is one or two cheap uh, padlocks like these ones. This one's a master padlock. Master is quite a, a big name in the lock world. And then this one is a no brand one from uh, B and Q, which actually come with this massive dent in it, which uh, isn't very reassuring. But again, I don't actually plan on locking anything up with these. I plan on picking them. The other thing you might find helpful is one of these. 
this is a bench vise. Uh, now, this is by no means necessary. However, for it to hold the lock still so you can have both hands free, one to tension and one to pick, is quite handy. This is probably a bit more necessary for me than it will be for you, unless you also happen to be shooting videos of yourself picking locks. However, I thought this was worth mentioning, as it does entertain me slightly to think what the hotel cleaning staff think I'm doing in my hotel room on a night. Before we can start looking at how to pick a lock, I think first it's important to have an understanding of the anatomy of a lock. So, let's have a closer look at that. Okay, so in order to look at the anatomy of the lock, we're going to look at this uh, acrylic lock I've got here. Now, I did look around for an image of a lock that I could put on the screen instead and talk through. However, I couldn't really find anything that suitable, uh, quite surprisingly, and I'm no artist, so I wasn't going to draw one. But we'll just start off with the basics. So this uh, piece of the lock is the shackle. And the clear acrylic bit, in this case, is the lock body. Looking at the bottom of the lock, this whole brass piece here uh, is referred to as either the core of the lock or the plug. I've heard it referred to as both during my research. Then looking inside the lock, you can see that we have, in this case, well, there's seven pins, but only six of them we're actually interested in. This last pin here just retains the plug from falling out of the lock. Uh, so we have the, yeah, as I say, the springs here. They're all in their individual little kind of channels that have been bored through the plastic. Then if we take a look at the bottom of the springs, we can see we've got these little brass pieces here. These little brass pieces are called the driver pins. And underneath each driver pin, there is also what's referred to as a key pin. The key pin is what you can see inside the lock just here. I'll just try and move it. It's kind of hard to do when looking through the camera. See that moving there? That is the key pin. And what you can see moving up here is the driver pin. They sit on top of each other. And if I push this one up far enough, you can see the break there, hopefully, in between the two pins. I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that's not one continuous pin. The point in between the, the plug and the uh, driver pins is called the shear line. So what we need to do in order to pick a lock is to set the key pins up to the height whereby the top of the key pin is sitting flush with the plug and the shear line is straight all the way across and that will allow the plug to turn. In this video I'm only going to be looking at standard lock pins. You do also get security pins that are a bit more difficult to pick, but we might well look at those in another video. If we take the key for the lock and pop it in, you can see that the pins, if I just take this out again, you can see the pins are all kind of sitting at different heights. And they're sitting at different heights because the, uh, the dips in the key are at different heights. But when we pop the key in, we can see that they're all sitting at roughly the same height, apart from that last one again, because we can't move that, because that is just retaining the, uh, the plug of the lock. When we turn the lock, when we t sorry, when we turn the key in the lock, you can see on the top of the core that's turning there, what you can see in those holes, that's the top of the key pins, and you can see how they've sheared free of the driver pins. Okay, so here we've now got the lock in the vise, and this will hopefully give you a bit of a better view than me holding it. This lock, as we said earlier, is a six pin lock. Now, it's quite handy to know how many pins are in your lock when you're picking it, as you know how many you're feeling for. 
an easy way to find out how many uh, pins are in the lock is to look at the key. And for each kind of divot or depression in the lock, that's a pin. Or on the key, should I say, sorry. Uh, then that represents a pin in the lock. However, if you don't have the key, which might well be the case if you're picking a lock, you can put your pick. For this, I'm just using this standard pick. I don't know what the actual name for this is, but this is definitely the most common type of lock pick. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's just called a, a hook or a standard hook or a standard pick. This one's a little bit thick. Um, you could kind of do with a thinner one, but uh, as I said, this is a bit of a budget set. And how you can tell how many pins you've got is if you pop this in the lock all the way to the back and pull it forward. Each time you pass a pin, you'll hear a little click and you've probably seen the pin drop there when I went past it. So that was one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we know that this is now a six pin lock. <clears throat> okay, so in order to pick the lock, we're going to also need to use one of our tension bars. I quite like this one in the kit. I think it's just because it's the shortest one. Um, you've got two options when you're tensioning the lock. You can put tension in the bottom of the keyway or in the top of the keyway. I'm going to pick this lock twice for you, once looking from this angle so you can see what the pins are doing and once looking at the keyway, so that will make more sense uh, later on. So I'm going to go ahead and put some tension in the keyway and you want to put tension in the direction that you would turn the key in the lock. Some locks you can turn either way. Now my tension just slipped there, which is something you've kind of got to watch for. You've got to get that right. Now, your tension has to be right. So basically, we're going to pick these pins one at a time. And by picking, what I'm meaning with these pins is basically just pushing up on them to try and force the key pin up and the driver pin out the way so that shear line is clean. What we're relying on here is some intolerances or some defects when this lock has been made that will say that the line in which that these uh, holes have been drilled into the core is not perfectly straight. So we should get a pin at a time binding up against the, sil uh, against the core as I'm putting tension on it. I hope that makes some sort of sense. Um, this will make a lot more sense if you have the things in front of you to be able to follow along. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start picking this lock and how I'm going to do that is I'm at a bit of an odd angle here because I'm at a table and I'm wanting to keep an eye on the camera uh, as well. Um, so this isn't the best way to hold a pick. The best way to hold it is like you're holding a pencil. But this lock is quite easy to pick so I'm just going to hold it. Sorry I lost my tension there again. So yeah, I'm just going to hold it like this. We're going to pick the pick into the keyway and feel around for our first pin. Now our first pin is really nice and springy, which means that pin is not binding up at all. So we can move on to our next one. So pin two is the same, nice and springy. Now pin three, I got a little bit of a click out of pin three. And if I take my pick, up, uh, my pick back out, you can see the pin 3 is now sitting higher than it was originally, which means we've successfully pushed that key pin out of the way and the driver pin sitting high. So we'll move on to pin 4. And a click out of pin 4 as well. We'll move on to pin number 5. I think because of the angle I'm at, I'm kind of missing, kind of going off at an angle. Okay, so a click out of number six. 
Okay, so I think number five is still binding up and that's why the lock hasn't sprung open yet. But I'm going to just go along and double check. I'm just going to change how I'm sitting slightly um, to make things a wee bit easier. Okay, and I lost the tension there when I've decided to, to move. Um, I'm just going to kind of move around a little and, um, and get a better angle on this lock. Now, I know this bit might be quite boring. Please bear with me. And there we go, the lock has come open. Um, apologies for that, it's it's kind of difficult to uh, show this on camera and do it at the same time, especially as I'm quite new to this, and hopefully that will improve uh, in the future. Uh, but yeah, we can see that that has successfully picked the lock and uh, it is um, the, lo the lock is open. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and close the lock. And I'm gonna... Uh, Spin it around so we can see the keyway and I'm going to show you what I'm doing from this side. So again, as I said, you can either put the the tension bar, I'm actually going to just change the angle on this slightly. not in there very secure but we'll just go with it you can either put the uh, tension bar in the bottom of the keyway and put tension on like this you can see it's turning slightly or you can put it in the top of the keyway and put tension on like that for this lock I think for me bottom of the keyway makes more sense um, it gives me more space uh, with my pick um, to kind of get in there. It, it's kind of, I, I, I haven't come across anything yet that says for this type of lock you must use top of the keyway or you must use bottom of the keyway um, tension. It seems to be kind of personal preference. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tension in place, although it keeps slipping. Um, and we'll pick this lock again from this angle. So one is nice and springy, as is two, and nothing out of three either. Number four is binding, so we've got to click out of four, five, and six, and there we go, the lock has again opened. I was at a bit of a better angle that time, so I got it a wee bit quicker. So, that's the basics of it. Um, I'm not really sure if I've explained that very well. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this part of the video now. And if I think that there's anything else I need to add, I'll come back and add it. Okay, so now we've had a look at our uh, acrylic lock and we've picked that a couple of times and we have a better understanding of what's going on in, inside of a lock that we can't see through. We're going to go ahead and have a look at picking this lock. So this lock is made by Master, and here's the packaging that came in, with the model number, and it's rated a 5 out of 10 for security on the Master Security Scale. Uh, and this lock cost me £5 from uh, B&Q. Uh, if you don't know what B&Q is, if you're from outside of the UK, B&Q is a, a, it's like a DIY superstore. So we're going to go ahead and uh, give this a go. So I have uh, successfully picked this a couple of times in preparation for this video. Um, however, I could bet my bottom dollar that it's not going to go as well this time. So I find it uh, easier to hold the lock like this, which probably isn't very good um, for the camera. 
but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. So I've got some uh, tension on the keyway here, and I'm going to go ahead and pick the lock. So pin one, there's nothing there, that's nice and springy. Same on pin two. Pin three is bound up, so we'll push down on that. As is pin four, push down on that. Got a little bit of rotation out the lock there as well. Push down on pin one, and there we go, the lock is open. So I found this a relatively easy lock to pick. Um, I'm not sure how long that just took me there, but it didn't feel like very long at all. Um, and on some occasions when I've been trying to pick this, it's come open super fast. Um, I think it's probably more uh, my hacking at it when I'm trying to learn the skill and, and pot look rather than anything else. Uh, but this lock can be opened very easily. Uh, interestingly, I do have another lock. Uh, let me just find it here. I also have uh, this lock, which is also from B and Q. This is uh, a B and Q kind of own brand, no name lock. Uh, this lock is actually in a state. Like, there's a big divot out of here at the bottom, um, and lots of kind of scratch marks and stuff on it. However, I have found this lock more difficult to pick than this one. Part of that is that there's more pins in here than there is in this one, even though you might not think of it because of the size, but there is. Um, but also the keyway is a little tighter on this one as well. Um, so yeah, it just goes to show that there is obviously other ways of opening locks, like non-skilled ways, uh, like raking a lock, for example, or using a bump key. Uh, which we might look at again in in other videos um, in this you know this kind of pin by pin picking is you know the, the traditional kind of um, you know skilled way of picking a lock but yeah as I say this one for three pounds I found more difficult to pick uh, than this name brand lock for five pounds which I find interesting Okay, so I think I'm going to leave this video there. Um, I kind of feel like I've rambled on quite a bit, but it is um, a, quite a difficult thing to try and explain a, a very intricate um, task uh, while having a, a camera between you and the task that you're doing. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed it. And as I say, I might make a, a series of these videos. So if you'd like to see more lock picking videos and tutorials, then please do go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and also like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.